Now I mentioned that there are two aspects to all compositions in Carnatic music that is the dhatu and the matu, dhatu being the musical aspect uh, and the matu being the lyrical, the textual aspect. Um, most compositions that are rendered in Carnatic music are composed by Vagayakaras. Vagayakara is an ancient concept, it is an ancient phenomenon and uh, the word means Vak Geya Kara that is the person who creates both the text and the music. Vak is a text, the words. Geya means the musical aspect. Kara is the person who does it. So, composers in Carnatic music are Vagya Karas. Um, they create both the musical and the textual content. And the great Vagya Karas, we believe, uh, lyrics and music poured forth spontaneously together. It was not as if they, they wrote out a poem and then set music to it. That is not, uh, that is not how um, we believe these compositions were created. Um, oral tradition uh, tells us that these musicians, these, um, and many of them were saints, the songs poured out of them spontaneously. We do also have some compositions which uh, where you have the lyricist, the person who has written the song and uh, some musician setting it to music. There are compositions like that, but the bulk of the core Carnatic compositions are creations of Vagya Karas. So, the lyric and the music were conceived and they came out together, they were created simultaneously. Kriti simply means that which is done. So, it is interesting that such a generic term should apply to a musical composition. In the north also, bandish is a similar term. Bandish is anything that is tied uh, in tal and uh, compositions in Hindustani music are referred to by the just generic word bandish. Another word for instance khayal. Khayal means thought, idea and it refers to kind of composition in Hindustani music. So, it is interesting that um, a fairly a completely non-musical word should refer to musical compositions. Now, the general structure of a kriti is three tired. There are three sections to a kriti. The first which is uh, which usually runs to one or two avartanas that is called the Pallavi. The second section which is uh, called the Anupallavi may run to two to four lines. The Charanam, the last section, it may run from four to eight lines or more. Now, within this um, this three tired three tired structures. There are some kritis which are which have more than one charanams. So there will be more sections than three. And there are kritis which have only two sections. So there is a lot of um, leeway, there is a lot of variation, but broadly a kriti it, it can be safely said that most kritis are three tired. There is the Pallavi, Anupallavi and the Charanam. And how these three sections are structured, how the musical setting happens, that uh, there is great divergence there uh, amongst the Vakaya Kairas. So, the Agaraja would have one way of structuring the Akriti and one way of 
giving it a musical setting Dikshidar another of another great Magyekara has a completely quite different way of uh, structuring the composition as well as giving it the musical setting uh, Kriti in the Raga Chanaranjani Aditala by Sanjay Subramanian you will see the lyrics playing also and you can clearly see how the three sections of the Kriti are rendered Bidaja Ladura Na Manasu Vinara and for the sake of the music we say Na Manasu again this composition is in Telugu it's a Tyagaraja composition as I said Bidaja Ladura Na Manasu Bidaja Ladura Na Manasu Bidaja Ladura as I said is uh, always religious in theme and there various shades of the religious attitude can be found in Kritis ranging from a simple straightforward prayer to a deity to just protect or show benevolence to show grace and right up to abstract ideas of um, Pantheism or even or Advaita Vedanta. So all kinds, all shades of 
religious ideas are found in Krithis. And this Krithi, in this Krithi, Thyagaraja says that uh, even though my mind is tossed about because of desires, I will not let your let go your sacred feet. Vidaja Ladura So this is a typical Kriti of Tyagaraja and we will see later on that there are other kinds of uh, he has structured Kritis in different in other ways too and he has also composed other forms of compositions. He has given us other compositional forms too. Now let us listen to another Kriti. This is a composition of Muthuswami Dikshidar. This is just to show how though both of them have the three tired structure, still internally there is a great deal of difference. Shri Matha Dagnapati
so as you could see the lyrics the text the uh, there is what is called a chitta swaram in this kriti where there are swaras the swaras are set mm pamagama re gama tanakujam here tanakujam this is from the world of dance this is what is called jatti pamagama re gama tanakujam nisari kitaka panisajanut nisari matakkanam magama takita papamari mita mapani tadi mitaka and so on so there is uh, uh, swaras and jatis have been woven together and this is part of the kriti and even the kriti structure itself is quite different when compared to matyagaraja kriti there is also what is called the madhyamakala sahityam where there is a textual passage which is rendered at a faster as twice the speed as the rest of the composition omada dara pallava pada kara guru guha graja shivatmaja shri magha so this passage what is called madhyama kala sahityam is at twice the speed compared to the rest of the composition now this is uh, a, a typical stylistic feature of dikshagar compositions and there are many others which we will see when we talk in detail about these vagyakaras the immediate purpose here is just to say that though we speak of kriti as one compositional form there are many stylistic divergences within this broadly yes there are three sections to the kriti pallavi anupallavi charanam but as we will see later on also there are there is considerable variation variety here 